and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage. He says what he wants. Kenny Shields! Let's just relive, you know, heading up to the game and how you were feeling going into it. I can uh, remember the eight, eight, we stayed in this hotel the night before the final. And um, it was there I met a former player on that, on that evening. And he said to me, can I, you don't beat the old firm in a final at Hamden. And he had his stats and all there. And he says, look, they haven't been beaten in so many years uh, by a team not from the, the big two. Yeah. So that, that gave the lads some motivation when I told them. And, um, but when we were walking down those stairs, uh, getting ready to go and play the match, I don't know what the players felt like, but I was as, as nervous maybe as I've ever been yet, because the, the supporters were gathered around the hotel, um, and, and, and I don't know if that's traditional in Scotland, because I, I haven't been in another final in Scotland, but uh, it, was quite, it, it was quite emotional because everybody was wanting to uh, get on the bus and everybody was uh, giving us the best wishes and the, you know, the passion that that gave us was very, very good. And uh, I remember thinking, if only, and I really hope we can, walk back up those stairs after the game and feel as if we've achieved something and it was a great a great day out what was the mood like and uh, yeah yeah please <laughs> what was the mood like on the on the bus were the boys up for it was there a bit of nerves what was on the way to towards Hampton what, what, what was the mood like i think everybody's their own way of uh, heading heading things like I don't want to be too different than what I, what I normally am. So it was, it, was, it was just a bus journey into Hamden and getting ready for the final. Um, everybody took to it like there was, I could feel there was good confidence, but you never know. So many times you feel that we're up for this and when the first whistle goes, it actually, they weren't up for it. <laughs> But in this occasion, they no, were. You mean, you mean Momo Sissoko wasn't up for it? <laughs> Sick. I think that helped us win the actual game itself because the fact that he made that mistake early doors, he became more uh, vigilant and he didn't want to make mistakes. Normally, he's that laid back. You know, he's, he's horizontal. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's a great lad, uh, Dudu, and he... He got the grips with the game and he was one of the best players in the, on the pitch. Like, what, what was it like on the way back down the road? What was it like coming round about the town and seeing, seeing people everywhere? What, what, what was that like? Well, the mood was... The mood of the players, I don't know, you can ask the lads, but... I, from my memory is we, we didn't tell the players about Liam Spaller mm -hmm. and uh, but some of them had an inkling and Michael or Chairman Michael took him in the ambulance to hospital and um, you know looked after that side of things which is very very good of him and we is it John Finney Street is it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we, you know fine it's John Finney Street <laughs> <laughs> so, so we come down there in the bus, in the open top bus, and um, I didn't know if the players knew, and I, I didn't know what way to tell them. So um, I sort of tried to fish and see if anybody knew, but the, the players will let you know when they come up here. But I, I felt it, it ruined the, the whole emotion yeah. for, the, for the players and for the, some of the close people. We come back to the hotel here, and had a really good night with, within the realms of, of maybe not celebrating too much because Liam wasn't with us and um, it was nice that Liam was able to go back to Parkhead and, and score that goal. Yes. Um, can I ask you a question? 
How much would the cami bell gloves be that he wore at Hamden? Priceless. Correct. Priceless. Or the gloves that he wore when we beat Celtic for the first time in 55 years. <laughs> Priceless. That's the thing the Priceless. You can't put a price on that. You can hear that there. From, from your point of view and your time at Kilmarnock, obviously that behind you sticks out a mile, but what kind of long-lasting memories do you have of, of being around Kilmarnock, the club, the town? It's a fantastic experience for me. Um, I sort of I grew myself into the, the culture and, uh, and, and I knew a lot of people from the town here as well because I come in at least twice a week because I was staying in Edinburgh at the time. So I said to the chairman, I need to get closer to um, Kilmarnock itself, which I felt more in touch with them. And I felt it was good to do that. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's like a Northern Ireland culture because the towns around, we, a lot of our towns are the same size as Kilmarnock, Ballymena, Portadown, Coleraine. They're all similar sized towns, which brings a similar type of culture. And uh, it was quite familiar to me. I like to come to Ayrshire uh, rather than stuck in other parts of Scotland. So it was good for me that to come over here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Shields!